hello everyone and welcome to the channel so in this video i have compiled some of the questions from um, from your part b that is two marker questions from physical chemistry so i'm not going to solve exactly all the questions but i'll also try to explain like i'll try to give you the answer as well as i'll try to give you the equation or the or a hint that how you can solve that particular question fine so let's start with it we were having around uh, 13 questions 12 or 13 questions from this uh, physical chemistry so let's start solving them so here is the first question over here the question says that the mobility of divalent cation in the water is given that is 8 into 10 to the power minus 8 meter square per volt per second the effective radius of the ion is viscosity was given in your semi uh, poise okay so poise is a unit of your uh, viscosity first of all uh, that you have to convert it into pascal second okay so one semi poise is equals to uh, 10 to the power minus 3 um, pascal second so you have to convert into that and then e is given to you and then you have to use this particular equation to you know to do that okay so the equation was this that is this u is equals to um, e z upon 6 pi eta r okay where e is your charge which is given to you in the question z will be 2 because it's a divalent cation 6 is 6 pi is pi you know eta eta is uh, the uh, viscosity that's what you have to convert and then put over here and r you have to calculate u is the mobility that's value is already given to you so when you will solve it when you will calculate it you will get option number 2 that is 212 picometer so that's going to be the correct answer for this now talking about question number 48 over here the electric double layer model if you have studied this electric double layer model now i have studied i like i have taught this topic uh, in the plus classes and over there i have taught this that uh, actually i have not given that this should be like exactly the th same thing but yeah in that electric double layer you have a stern layer also okay so from there also you can just uh, like you can just predict the answer that it could be stern so yeah uh, for this particular question the correct answer is your stern so in the stern model you have a uh, like you have a static layer as well as a uh, like diffuse layer okay so there are two layers over there okay so that's the stern for that particular question now talking about this question over here 49 it was pretty simple question it was asked on the lowest energy unnormalized wave function for h2 plus molecule so it's unnormalized and lowest energy okay so lowest is your bonding energy and the like higher one will be anti-bonding for bonding we take positive for anti-bonding we take subtraction of the two and uh, like since r1 and r2 are the different uh, distances of the electron from the nuclei so for one of them it will be like for for the first hydrogen atom it will be like size equals to e to the power minus r1 by a naught so that is going to be for one of the atom okay similarly for the second one it will be like e to the power minus r2 by a naught now since you are trying to find out the lowest unnormalized that is that means you are trying to find out the energy of the binding orbital or the wave function associated with the binding orbital so that will be this one that is first option that is size equals to e to the power minus r1 by a naught plus e to the power minus r2 by a naught so that's going to be the correct option for this talking about question number 50 over here it says that the nearest uh, neighbor distance so it was pretty simple very easy question direct question if you have studied solid state you get you could have done this easily so the answer is face centered cubic the next one over here it was also very simple one it is based upon this particular formula is equals to n square h square upon 8 ml square where l you have to put as 2 2 l and n value you have to put as 8 when you solve it up you will get option number 4 so that was pretty simple very easy question talking about 52 so now this is a good question which was asked from uh, your uh, physical spectroscopy and over here these statements which were given to you first of all i'll tell you the correct answer the correct answer according to me should be option number one that is your dcl has a smaller zero point energy um, than hcl because your zero point energy is given by like half h mu okay so it depends upon frequency so frequency of dcl will be less than that of hcl and that's because of the uh, like that's because of the more uh, reduced mass of dcl than that of hcl Okay. so this this point is totally incorrect this is also incorrect and the force constant does not depend upon like it does not depends upon mass exactly so third option is also not correct so option number one should be the correct one. so that's how uh, like i'll try to explain it in more detail in the upcoming videos or maybe on an academy so for now these are the answers and these are the tentative ones let's take the other questions also and let's see what we will answer for. fine so let's talk about this particular question over here uh, it was asked that one mole of monoatomic ideal gas is transformed from 300 kelvin at and 2 atm to 600 kelvin at 4 atm right 
and the entropy of change for this reaction we got us so the answer for this particular question is option number 1 and the the formula used over here should be this that is uh, your uh, delta s is equals to cp uh, ln t2 by t1 minus r ln p2 by p1 okay so that's what the formula we have to use just put all the things cp is equals to 5 by 2 r so just put it over here and try to solve we'll get the answer talking about question number 54 it says that the allowed transition the atomic symbol so you know that for a particular uh, transition there should be no change in your like the delta l should be plus minus 1 and uh, there should be no change in spin multiplicity so there were two options like that that is option number uh, yeah so we were ha having option number first in the same way like there uh, it was like uh, yeah and one more option was there that is your option number 4 so both of these options were uh, like both were following the same condition like the delta l is plus minus 1 over here and spin multiplicity is not getting changed so the next the next uh, rule the next selection rule should be this that is delta j is equals to plus minus 1 and that will be applied and i think option number 1 should be the correct answer next one is pretty simple easy question that total number of symmetry elements it was as in diborane it is a d2h symmetry like it is having d2h point root so the number of uh, like total number of symmetry elements over here will be 8 okay the next one over here the physical observable x appears with the probability distribution so here is the probability distribution given to you the average value of x equals as so the formula used over here should be integration of x fx dx so you just have to integrate that from minus infinite to plus infinite and i think uh, like i'm not pretty much sure but yeah i think option number 3 should be the correct option 6 will be the answer for this i'll try to solve this and tell you the correct answer okay so i have not solved but in the in the fraction of time which i got i just tried it and it's option number 3 i think talking about this question over here the rotational partition function is expected to be smallest for the molecule so rotational partition function depends upon your uh, moment of inertia and moment of inertia depends upon your reduced mass so the one which is the smallest or the lightest one will have the smallest uh, rotational partition function so i think option number 1 should be a correct option for this talking about question number 58 so the half life of reaction is inversely proportional to the square of concentration of reactants so it's pretty simple very direct question uh, it's uh, like uh, order 3 okay so the rate, uh, order of the reaction is 3 over here. fine so it's quite simple like for zero order your t half is directly proportional to concentration first order is in independent of the concentration for second order is Uh, inversely proportional and for uh, third order it will be square of inversely proportional okay so it's like that talking about question number 59 it is a direct question okay it was a it was a direct question which was asked so uh, the equation which is used over here is called as carother equation okay so that's called carother equation and that is your equation number 1 so it's the relation between degree of degree of polymerization and your monomer consumed okay so your option number 1 should be your correct option so this these were all your physical chemistry question uh, asked for two marks in your csr june 2018 uh, sorry june 2019 exam i'll take one more last question which was asked actually from your bio and organic chemistry but since it is asked along with this physical chemistry questions so let us discuss that also to end this video so let's talk about this last question actually it was from bio and organic chemistry the question says that the correct match of the following compound in column 1 with the uh, with the property in column 2 so in column 1 okay so the one which is well known over here is your dichloro difluoromethane okay we all know we have been studying this topic like we have been studying this chemical since our class 10th that it is it is the main cause of your ozone layer depletion so your p is matched with 4 okay so p is matched with 4 that is true so that means option number 2 can be correct or option number 4 can be correct you can easily like cancel out option number 1 and 3 now the other one are like i i don't know i am not a bi uh, bio student so for me these terms are new but yeah uh, sulfur diazine okay that i know so sulfur diazine is actually it's an antibacteria okay so it's a it has antibacterial property it's anti it's used as a antibacteria so yeah q will be matched with uh, your third okay so that's all i know about this others like cortisone and uh, hexachlorobenzene their properties and all i don't know about them so just with the help of these two it was easy to approach the question so your option number 4 is correct option that means r is one that means your cortisone uh, cortisone 
is your anti-inflammatory as well as this hexachlorobenzene is insecticidal. Yeah, hexachlorobenzene is also known for their insecticidal properties, okay. A derivative of them uh, like DHT is used in, in as an insecticide, right. So yeah, option number 4 is correct option for this. So fine, that's all for this particular video. I have tried to like give answers of all the part B physical chemistry questions. I think you guys found, found this video helpful. If you guys found this video helpful, give it a like. And I'm trying to solve part C questions also, although they are not that much easy to solve. But yeah, detailed explanation of all these questions will be available on my academy profile. So if you are not following me yet, there is a link in the description. So you can go and follow me over there. And uh, yeah, I'll become like I'll come back with uh, part C videos also. So that's all for this particular video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye bye.